into chapter 11 right and um, we were discussing till we discussed till chapter 13 14 today we are going to discuss 13 to 24 is the section that Narada describes the duties of the different varnas. Okay, so the 13th shloka we saw that those who have been reformed by the Garbhadan Saskar and other reformatory methods, other Sanskara, which are generally performed. And we have been approved by Lord Brahma, Bhujas. So they are called twice born of Bhuja. Such Brahmans, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas, purified by their family traditions and by their behavior, should worship the Lord, study the Vedas, and give joy. Okay. So in this system, they should follow the principles of the four ashramas, Brahmacharya, Krishna. The divine presence, so they become Brahmin, and at the same time they follow uh, four ashramas. Okay, so you know, so this is the thing that Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, these are four social orders, and Brahmacharya, Grastha, Vantra, Sanya, these are spiritual orders. So in social order, everybody is. Recommended that they should come to the level of Brahman at least, and in the spiritual order, they are recommended that everyone should come to the level of sannyas. First, Brahmachari, then Krasna, then Krasna, then Krasna, sannyas. Okay. So, this uh, 13th shloka, Sanskara, Yatta, Vichinna, Sadhguru, Jagatya, Ijya, Dhyanam, Dhanani, Dhanani, Dhanana. Janma karma vada karana kriyashastram chavitaha. Those who without fail perform the sanskaras, avichinna yatra sanskaraha. Without fail, avichinna yatra sanskara means without fail you are performing the sanskaras. And are in this way, jagad ajaha. So, Brahma, approved by Brahma. Aja means Brahma. So, they are called dijas. And not twice born. Saha Dijaha. So they are performing sanskaras properly and they are approved by Brahmaji. So they are Saha Dijaha. They are Dija and Brahmins. Okay. And such Brahmins, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas, Dijamanana. Okay, purified by their family tradition and by their behavior. Janma, karma, avadadana. So by their janma and by their karma. And you know, purified by their family traditions in whatever type of family they are born, so those and then uh, by their um, activities by karma, so they are purified. So, what they should do? Each adhyana dhanani, they should each means they should worship the supreme person, God and, God and Krishna, and so they should worship Krishna, study the Vedas, adhyana means they should study. The Vedas, Dhanani, and they should do charity. Okay, so in this way, Ashram Chodita Kriyaha. So in this way, they should follow the principle of the four Ashramas. Okay, so this uh, shloka says uh, that these are those who perform the Sanskaras without fail. Okay, this is very important. Nobody can call themselves Dija if they are not done with the Sanskara. Such Dija should worship and they first thing is what first thing is they should perform sanskaras second thing is that they should worship the supreme lord krishna and study the vedas and give some charity okay so and the last thing is they should also follow their ashram dharma okay so they are brahmacharya they should follow brahmacharya dharma grasta grasta dharma so they should be at least in four out of four any one of the ashram they should be so now we don't know which ashram I am. Right? So they should know that they are in this ashram. Okay. So in speaking about Varnas, first the characteristic of the second born are described. He is called second born or Dija. Dija who got second born. So who has performed sanskaras?
Okay, so they are called Dvija if they are done with the sanskaras. So this is the first characteristic of the Dvijas. Okay, that. Uh, so he is called second born who has performed sanskaras starting with Garvadhan using mantras. Okay. If the continuity of samskara is broken, the person is a Vijavantu. Brahma prescribed this for the second born at the beginning of creation. This means that birth from a pure mother and father is the chief characteristics of the second born. So, if they are there, see, this is why uh, we can not completely neglect the the birth thing uh, because if uh, somebody is from a pure family definitely they will their parents uh, might have done some sanskaras that means the father and mother are also pure so if pure mother and pure father will unite then they will have definitely a good pure child right so that is the point here you know so that is why uh, who will perform Garvadhan Sanskar? Only a pure mother and pure father will be able to perform Garvadhan Sanskar. Otherwise, uh, people don't even know what is Garvadhan Sanskar is all about, right? So, Garvadhan Sanskar is before the birth. You know? That means inviting a child in the womb of mother. You know? So, in, in the life of a person, there are 16 Sanskaras basically. So, uh, one sanskara is done by the parents before the birth itself, inviting the child. And one sanskara is done after the death by the son. You understand? One sanskara is done by parents. So, the person came as the child of his mother and father. And after death, the last sanskara is done by the son. So, that is why it is called Antim Sanskar. This is the last one. Now he died, died now. So he cannot do. So his son will do. And remaining 14 will be done in between when he is alive. No? Okay. So they will be done. And out of these 14 uh, will be done. Uh, the last is last. 16. And before Antim Sanskar, there is one Sanskar called Viva Sanskar. Marriage ceremony. And before marriage. So that means all the sanskar basically now you remove three like one is before birth one is after death and one is marriage so all the sanskar the remaining 13 sanskaras are done between um, after birth and before marriage now who knows this after birth five year old he is in the school and then no sanskaras at all they are not at all allowed to, to be called as Brahman because there is no sanskaras done. You know? So, this uh, sanskaras are very, very important okay, uh, to be done. So, in the the first sanskaras is Garvadan sanskara which is mentioned here in this shloka. So, that's why it is called Dvija. And because the pure mother and pure father only gave birth to a, a child, so that child is definitely going to be pure. Okay, so it is already the birth itself is pure, so later activities will be already also pure. And so that is why it is too much and depending upon the parents that how the child will be. Many times, child parents school the child. Are what kind of child is this? What kind of activities? Are a so naughty child? Are everything is depending on the consciousness of the parents during the union? Okay, so we cannot completely blame the child also, you know? because at the time of union, if the mother and father, what is their consciousness? That consciousness will affect the soul which is going to come in the womb. Okay, so if they have too much uh, Rajoguni thought, then that kind of child will be born. If they have too much Tamoguni thought, 
that kind of um, and child will be born. That is why illicit sex is avoided you know, in Vedic sanskaras because illicit sexual activities are always in a sinful. So if those activities are done, then the child will be not very good you know, by the consciousness. You know? So like before marriage, they have union and a marriage is not done and they have union and they got a child. So it is very difficult for that child to become a devotee. You know, the child will have so much that kind of thoughts. And uh, illicit relationships are not good. Actually, uh, if there is no sanskaras performed, then it is not good. You know? Because how can, like we know, no, this is normal, and right before, like there is a marriage sanskar, there is all the sanskaras there, right? So, like that, Garvadan Sanskara also should be performed. Okay, so Iskon has published a few books about Garvadan Sanskara, how to do that and all. And uh, what are the mantras and how it should be done and how we can find the uh, dates, muhurta. For every sanskar, there is a muhurta, right? So, in that muhurta only, sanskar must be done, right? It is not any time, you know. So, a muhurta is done. A permission has been taken right from the elders and from the guru. Eh? So, in a proper time, you, you remember third canto, it was told uh, that Diti did not follow these rules, and that is why she got two great demon in her womb. Okay, uh, two great demon Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha came in the womb of Diti, such a horrible demons, right? Why they came? Because that time, and Diti's consciousness, first thing, Diti's consciousness was not pure. Second thing, she did not follow the order of the elders. Okay, third, she disrespected the Lord Shiva and other ten gods. And in this way, and uh, First thing, she did not follow uh, her consciousness, elders, uh, and the time. The fourth thing is the time was not proper. So these four things are very essential. Uh, before in a union, before performing Garvadan Sanskar, one should know the right muhurta, perfect time. And one should take the permission and blessings from all the elders in the family, like parents and whoever are there, elders. Uh, and one should seek the blessings from the demigods. You know, all the devatas, their blessings should be there. And the time should be proper time. Okay. So, so in this way, these uh, and the consciousness should be there. Very pure consciousness should be there. So these four things at least, if followed, then the child will be good. You know. So we cannot blame all the time uh, the child because. Uh, it is the parents who uh, it is the parents who seek the uh, blessings. Uh, sorry, it is the parents who are inviting the child, right? So you only invited such a horrible child. Diti only got such a setup, so demons came, right? So there is a question now here that why they they should seek blessing from demigods, not Krishna. Of course, it is said, uh, if somebody is already worshipping a worshipping Krishna, then it's wonderful, na? But if not worshipping, some may not have uh, idea. I mean, even somebody is worshipping uh, Krishna, they cannot disrespect any gods, right? So that's what the thing is like, uh, Diti did a union in the evening time. So evening time is the time when Lord Shiva goes on around just to see the is Ganas. You know. So, if that time anything is performed, then Lord Shiva will, will be disrespected because he is roaming now. So, he will see you performing such kind of things. So, he, that is a disrespect for Devatas. In Sandhya time, Devatas are there. So, it is a disrespect. So, we cannot disrespect the demigods. So, if we disrespect them, they will curse us. You know. So, in order to, uh, but if we worship Krishna, 
and we also give respect to them, they will also get blessings. Here, like you see, like Dhruva, he got blessings. He worshipped in Narayan, but he got blessings from them. They then he got also Prahlad Maharaj also worshipped Lord Nursing Dev Krishna, but Brahma Shiva, everybody gave him blessings. So um, I seeking blessings, I meant this only that do not disrespect the demigods. Because if you do in an improper time, then uh, because we people are not knowing what is the proper time, so then some devta may get disrespected, right? That time maybe belongs to that devta and he may not be happy. So that's why proper murta should be found out, and that murta things should be done. Then no devta will be disrespected, and there should be a havan and all those things are there. And and in kaliuga means if you cannot do havan, then at least some sankirtan should be there. And so elders blessings you can go and approach. Actually, you can approach now. Today we are going to perform Garbadan Saskara. Please bless us. And in that way, you can see the blessing of elders and you can see blessings of Krishna and all the devatas by Krishna. And you can find a proper time from Guru and blessings of Guru also. You, should, you can ask whether we should go or not for Garbadan Saskara. Whether it can be performed or not, is it the right time? So, Guru will advise. Now, Guru knows all things about you. So, Guru will say, is it time or not? And then, uh, consciousness is the most important part here. Now, that one's consciousness should be pure. Krishna consciousness. If Krishna consciousness is there, uh, in our consciousness, our Chetana, Krishna is there. And uh, then, Definitely the child will be a devotee of Krishna. So, for that, Srila Prabhupada recommended that husband and wife both should chant minimum 50 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra separately. Okay. They should, uh, husband separately 50 rounds. Uh, it's not like 25, 25 total 50. No, it's not like that. 50, husband should chant, 50 rounds, wife should chant. You know? And then they should go to Garbhadhan uh, Sanskar. I was telling this one, one, one person asked me this. I was telling him, he said, if I chant 50 rounds of Hare Krishna, how I feel? How, I, how can I unite? I said, that is the point here. That your consciousness should be changed. So when, after chanting 50 rounds, what the person will feel, right? You can imagine. You know? And that should be Kirtan whole day in the home, you know, and then there should be Vaishnavas in the home, you know, and you should feed them nice. You should cook nice prasadam and feed all the Vaishnavas, and personally and take the plates and wash their plates and take that remnants of the Vaishnavas and, uh, and <laughs> pay obeisances, pranam to every each and everyone, and take their blessings. You know. And then you should perform kirtan, and then you should chant 50 rounds minimum. You know? And then uh, one should, uh, and then there should be nice kirtan and all those things. Nice. You know? Then one should go. So that a whole day person is doing this kind of activities. You know? Then what is will be the consciousness? So that consciousness when per, person performs garbhadan samskaras, that consciousness. Uh, pure child will come. Krishna's devotee will come as the child. Okay. So, this is the process. But, uh, uh, of course, there are, I mean, after birth, of course, the sanskaras are needed. But, the Garbhada sanskar benefit is that, that uh, the child, original, the, uh, by birth itself, the pure child is there. So, Making this child more advanced in devotion is easier. But if some not that much pure child has come, then it's a little difficult, right? So that is why some children from the birth itself, they will chant Hare Krishna from two year, three year old. They will know all the mantras, rule Bhagavad Gita, Bayat, it and like that. They are very expert, right? But some children will take some time. Some will take by 10 year, by 15 year, some... 20 years, it will take time, right? So, then the 
uh, external atmosphere also matter so of course if there is a some proper atmosphere then even though children born um, through illicit relationship uh, like before marriage or illegal relationship children all the children also can become devotee if they are given proper training and uh, association so devotion is not bound to anyone that also should be understood so they can also become devotee and on top of that if a devotee if a children whatever his background may be whatever kind of birth may be if that child got blessings from a devotee then he will definitely become a, a nice devotee right that is why you may see a lot of devo people who were having a very bad kind of family background or illegal relationship birth like that but they become so nice devotee and you know, why because some pure devotee blessed them or prayed for them some devotees are praying that this person should become a devotee so so they are progressing fast and you know, despite of all the sinful activities and you know, they might have done uh, they might have done lot of all the four regulatory principles they might have broken meat eating gambling intoxication illicit sex abortion everything they might have done but now if they have uh, asked forgiveness from krishna and devotees and and begged that please pray for us so that we can become devotee so then some devotee will pray some devotee will bless then they can also become nice devotee and purify themselves okay so this is the process of uh, power of devotees association right Uh, you see, the first canto Narad Ji past time was there, and uh, Narad Ji was a son of a Dasi, maid servant. But some nice devotees blessed Narad Ji. He became Narada, right? Bhakti Acharya. Now he only writing uh, this Pancharatri ki budi and Narad Bhakti Sutra. So he is the Acharya of Bhakti. Then Narad Ji made so many wonderful devotees like Pralad, Dhruva, Prachetas, and so many nice devotees he made. And a king of Prachin, many many people Narad Ji made devotee and sent them back home back to God. You see such a powerful devotee Narad Ji became. But he is a he was a son of a Dasi, maid servant. So it's not like that. Now, but again. if it is wonderful if the garbhadan sanskara is performed and child by birth itself is a pure ch child then it is will be very fast progress right so uh, but again uh, association of devotees and blessing of devotees are also very 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 powerful they can make anyone as devotee of krishna okay so there was there is one very famous devotee in iskon hari das prabhu Now, so this Prabhu was actually he was a pickpocketer in Bombay. He used to do pickpocketing everywhere. So one day he saw a magazine, you know, somewhere, and in that magazine, Shil Prabhupada photo was there. Actually, it was a scan magazine, and back of that, Shil Prabhupada photo was there. So Prabhupada was somebody actually gifted Prabhupada a very Rolex, so very costly watch, and that time. Now, like fifty, sixty years back, such a costly watch Prabhupada was having in his hand, and that photo was there. So this uh, boy, he was a big problem. So he thought, I should steal this watch, you know, and uh, I should steal. This will be a very good thing for me. You know, I can sell and get a lot of money. So he checked the address where I can meet this Sami. So he saw the address there in the magazine, and he went there, center of the spot in Bombay, and he was there always nearby, and he started living there. That, but what was his idea? He wanted to steal. He wanted. He was waiting for a chance so that I will get a chance and I will steal the watch of Shri Lokpal, and I will run away. That was the idea he was having. So, but he was a boy only. So Prabhupada said, "Okay, you be here and do some service and give him prasada. No problem. No nice small boy." Prabhupada knew there is a big problem. So, but Prabhupada ignored. No, because Prabhupada wanted to make him a devotee. So Prabhupada ignored his activity, and he used to go to uh, his service was go and buy market uh, some vegetables, grass, you know. So he will go there, and some money will be remaining that he will keep, and he will buy chocolate for himself. Because he liked chocolate, 
okay so one day he was uh, bringing some vegetables from market and on uh, in the ashram on the way in the gallery he saw shri gopal so all of a sudden he got afraid and he his uh, bag fell down so lot of chocolates fell down so prabhupad uh, saw that there are lot of chocolate he is stealing money and purchasing chocolates so prabhupad took one chocolate and uh, he is uh, he said what is this and so he said actually i like chocolate that's why i am purchasing it so he opened and he ate little bit prabhupad checked it and uh, then then he saw the wrapper and he said uh, there is cocoa in the chocolate so he said because in this chocolate there is cocoa we cannot eat this chocolate okay so this boy said okay i will not eat and then he said you come to my room right? so this boy was afraid that today i will be caught and uh, because his plan is to steal the watch now so he wanted to make a nice impression so that everybody will allow him and he will steal the watch so he was afraid today maybe i will be thrown out and i cannot steal watch so then prabhupad called him in the room he went there and uh, there prabhupad said you like chocolate why so he said because it's very tasty very sweet so prabhupad said i will give you some another thing and uh, if you like that then you should stop chocolate so he said okay so prabhupad gave him one big box of gulab jamun okay so he ate gulab jamun he liked it so prabhupad said you can have full box whenever you want you can eat and once it is over you come to me i will give you more so then this boy was uh, every day eating so many gulab jamun and then he liked it and later on his heart started changing now prabhupad blessed him and his heart started changing and he dropped the plan of uh, stealing this uh, watch and but now he started and then he started chanting now he felt that uh, i was so bad and why i want to steal and this that these people are so nice prabhupad is so nice why i want to steal his watch so he was feeling guilty now and uh, and uh, he was chanting and he heard classes now that if you chant then it is nice you know whatever all simple activity did it will be cleared so he was chanting very nicely everything and then there was one day a diksha program diksha program was there all the people were there set and everybody whose name was done exam everything was done they all were sitting and yakya everything arranged so he this boy also doing some service and helping others in diksha program is a big ceremony there you know so many yagyas has to be performed and prabhupad was sitting and diksha was going on you know so prabhupad called him from this come here where is your mala he said my mala is there inside he said why you are not sitting for diksha so he said i am just a new boy how can i sit for diksha nobody approved me i am not doing anything properly prabhupa said no i will give you diksha today you should sit so he said you bring your mala she so said my mala is in the kitchen uh, she so said no okay wait here so give a new mala so uh, somebody said actually we have only the we brought only the limited mala how many people are there that only that much mala only there so prabhupa said okay take my mala and today's onward your name is haridas prabhupa gave his own mala to him and he became an initiated devotee right and then later on he became such a nice devotee and he became very famous very great preacher and then he only uh, started itv ispon tv long back this devotee only started ispon tv a channel and you know? and in that lot of serials about prabhupad came movies came about prabhupad it was long back i think in 90s you know? and uh, that there only they made